Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the most fascinating black hole collisions ever discovered. The one we've talked about many times before, and the one that still is kind of mysterious even today. The collision between two relatively massive black holes of at least 85 and 66 solar masses that might have resulted in the creation of the first confirmed intermediate mass black hole. The black hole that was at least 140 times the mass of our sun. And that of course created a bit of a mystery. Because first of all, these two massive black holes were actually thought to not be even possible. Their masses are in what's known as the mass gap. The mass limit where certain stars, if they reach certain mass, instead of exploding in supernova creating black holes or neutron stars, explode leaving nothing behind. These are usually known as pair instability supernova and most likely involve stars that are at least 130 to maybe 250 solar masses. Anything above that and the star actually just collapses into a black hole directly, leaving behind a more massive black hole, anything below that and we get normal supernova resulting in typical stellar mass black holes. But for two black holes of 66 and 85 solar masses to exist in the same vicinity and to then actually collide forming an even more massive black hole, that's way too many unlikely coincidences all at once. So statistically this just made it kind of incredible, almost impossible. And so even today this collision that's known as GW190521 is still very very difficult to explain. Even today it raises way too many questions and doesn't provide enough answers. Or at least it didn't at first. But more and more studies came out in the last few years slowly explaining things in the process. While at the same time assuming all of these discoveries have been correct so far, potentially even allowing us to understand why exactly we've been seeing so many of these black hole collisions and why so many involved relatively large black holes. Here is a rough map showing us some of these collisions in the last few years, with these blue circles representing various black holes, and you can kind of see that the majority of them were at least 20 to 50 solar masses, resulting in something even more massive in the process. Yet a lot of the original predictions from approximately a decade ago have always predicted this to be much less, maybe 10 solar masses, maybe 15, not 50. So what exactly is happening here and why are we seeing so many large black holes collide and why have we actually been detecting so many in the process? But more importantly, how is this black hole collision even possible? Where exactly did these two black holes come from and what did they produce at the end? Well, interestingly enough, the data here does suggest that they did produce an intermediate mass black hole with nearly 9 solar masses of energy that released as space-time distortions that basically resulted in these gravitational waves that traveled for approximately 17 billion light years to reach planet Earth. And that's how we were able to detect it. But something else was detected a few months afterwards by a completely different team using completely different telescopes. Scientists using the Zwicky transient facility discovered a really bright flash of light coming from the same direction that happened around the same time, sort of resembling a typical supernova, except that the emissions were just a little bit different and did not really last very long. Now because of the distances involved, it was unclear if it came from exactly the same point, but because of the relative similarity of time and the location, the scientists then started to propose that these two events were probably related. But how can two black holes produce a flash of light bright enough to be visible from such a huge distance and essentially resembling a supernova? Well eventually, after months and months of deliberation, the scientists realized that maybe this was actually a solution to their problem. They might have realized what exactly happened here it's quite likely that these two black holes were in a very peculiar location. They were orbiting a much larger black hole, a supermassive black hole, with a very large accretion disk. And in this case, once they collided, the resulting black hole very likely flew directly through the disk, disturbing it in such a way that it basically resulted in an enormous explosion that from a distance would resemble almost a supernova-like explosion, but a very quick explosion that wouldn't last very long with the resulting black hole of approximately 140 solar masses traveling through the disk at approximately 200 km per second. Although when I originally talked about this back in 2020, the scientists also suggested that we might be able to see this particular explosion once again once the black hole comes back for a second passage through the accretion disk in approximately 1.6 years. And from what we know so far, it doesn't seem like it actually happened, so I don't know if maybe nobody was watching at this time because well, I guess it was during the COVID peak, so maybe the actual data has not been processed just yet. Or maybe the black hole did not pass through the accretion disk again. Or potentially, it might have been a wrong explanation. Either way though, we'll discuss this once more data becomes available. 
What is important here, though, is that this explanation provided all of the answers for everything we've observed. And most importantly, it suddenly provided an explanation for why we are actually seeing these unusual black holes to begin with. These black holes that should not exist must have been created as a result of previous collisions of other smaller black holes. And the reason it was so frequent, and actually the reason we have been seeing so many black hole collisions, is really because most of them seem to occur around various supermassive black holes, which very likely have a lot of black holes orbiting around them. Or in other words, most of the black holes we've seen so far, if not all of them, at least when it comes to black hole collisions, were all around a typical supermassive black hole. And many of them became more massive from previous similar collisions. And that, of course, made a lot of sense to a lot of scientists and actually kind of met the expectations of other theories. And so all of these unique circumstances suddenly made sense. Nothing here was statistically impossible, all of this was just in a very specific environment. But this was a few years ago. Now we have even more analysis and even more data, providing another piece of evidence making this either one of the most fantastic and most unlikely black hole collisions to ever occur, or definitively suggesting that it happened around a supermassive black hole. With this study right here that you can find in the description describing what they found. They've discovered something important about these black holes based on the observations of the actual shape of the waves created by these black holes as they reached planet Earth. In this case, determining that first of all, these black holes were not spinning, unlike other black holes, but on top of this, we're also approaching each other from what's known as a hyperbolic orbit. Or in other words, they weren't orbiting each other at all. They basically collided as they passed close to one another from different regions of space. And statistically, this can only happen in the region where there is a high concentration of black holes already. So maybe some kind of a cluster, or maybe around a supermassive black hole where we do believe a lot of black holes orbit already. And because it's extremely rare for objects to collide in the universe in such a way without orbiting around one another first, so far the best, most likely explanation for everything observed is really this. A supermassive black hole with a really large accretion disk that already has a lot of stuff orbiting around it. But assuming the study is correct, now we have a new mystery. And basically it's the old mystery we had from the beginning. If these were two non-spinning black holes, of approximately 66 to 85 solar masses in mass, if these were basically individual solitary black holes, how exactly were they formed? In order for a more massive black hole to form, original explanation suggested that these were results of different collisions from smaller black holes, but these individual collisions would probably produce a spinning black hole. A non-spinning black hole produced by a collision of two smaller black holes is extremely unlikely, probably even impossible. And so in this case, we're back to not really knowing exactly where these black holes came from. But the densely populated black hole cluster is still in this case the best explanation. There's actually one such cluster that was discovered not so long ago with the video in the description where many different black holes have been found inside a global cluster. But it can also obviously happen in a supermassive black hole region as well. And when it comes to explaining the origin of individual black holes in this case, only one other explanation comes to mind. The one involving something a little bit more exotic. The video in the description explains it a little bit better, but in a nutshell, in the same way that we have light redshifted over certain distances and it becomes more redshifted as you go farther and farther away, there has been an unusual proposition that suggested that masses of black holes can actually grow in size as a result as well. In other words, the mass itself of a typical black hole increases as you go farther and farther in terms of cosmological distances. It's a pretty intriguing explanation, and you can learn more about it in the description below. But naturally, there is no direct proof of any of this just yet. Just the fact that this was a very distant black hole collision, with the black holes in this case being really massive as well. But that's not enough evidence to prove any of this. And so at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. There's so much more to learn and understand about this particular black hole collision, because even after a few years, it still doesn't really make a lot of sense. And since the scientists expected to see another explosion from the accretion disk in approximately a year and a half, and it hasn't been seen yet, it only adds more to the mystery of where this happened, how it happened, and what exactly happened. Which basically means that we'll be coming back and talking more about this in months or years to come. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt with a black hole on it in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.